correct. Uh, so theoretically, that's working. So uh, test-driven development, that's what TDD stands for. Um, and basically, the mantra is write the test first. Now, the question to all of you is, why? What do you all think? Why would you? And OK, so actually, let me back up a little bit. So when I say write the test first, what I mean is like unit tests primarily. Uh, we talked about them a bit last lecture. Um, not so much integration tests, uh, although they can be if you've got a really strongly test-driven uh, development shop, uh, they often will. Um, but to get started, usually you're thinking of like unit tests. So any theories as to why you would do tests first? Seems a little counterintuitive, right? I'm remembering we had the talk about this. Okay. Uh, like to make sure you don't do any unnecessary work. Right. Any other reasons? Oh, yeah. Right. So it, it kind of like the crux of it is you write the code to fulfill the tests. Um, the result of that is you don't write any code you don't necessarily need to. Um, you have a much stronger sense of what you're trying to build beforehand. Um, and so what I was going to do was try to show you a little bit of a demo of how to do it. Uh, and that's where demo gods come into play. Um, which, you know, because I uh, attached it, different monitor, everything's all lost again. Um, This is the demo, guys. Okay, so might be a bit much. <clears throat> All right, is that relatively reasonable without being too ostentatious? Good, okay. Um, this will go much better if I can actually see what I'm typing, so uh, hopefully that'll do the thing. Um, so you go away. All right, so when we do write the test first, um, obviously I still can't see what I'm doing. I wonder if I should try to do a shared screen. Um, but so what I did was uh, kind of a, I was playing around, you know, essentially I found a TDD example. And so um, basically because one of the hardest things I think with most programming languages, most, you know, kind of new projects or whatever is getting the setup right. So the first thing you do is you need kind of the setup files to make sure that, you know, whatever tool you're using to run your tests is actually happening, you know, all that kind of stuff. So there's no automation here, but at least the setup is there. So that's why you see some kind of code here that, uh, I haven't done. Um, sorry, just, I can't read that over there. Um, okay, so this is how you write a test. Okay, so um, basically you have, an, oh, sorry, by setup, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to build a calculator. Okay, and so far we know we wanted to add numbers together. Okay, and this brilliant piece of software we want to approach by doing tests first. So the first thing we do is we come up with our kind of ideas of what those tests might be. And we start writing those tests. And the key being, let me get my other window, which is uh, let's see, can I get
Okay. And so, so, you know, some may prefer to do this in uh, like VS Code in the little terminal there. I tend to do it in a separate terminal window. I don't know why. It's just probably because I've been programming this way for a long time. Um, so, you know, your mileage may vary. Um, but if we run PyTest, right, um, this is the, this is the, a good outcome, okay? <laughs> because we, we found that there's a test, and then we tried to run the test, but there's no code that actually does it, <coughs> okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna think about some other tests we should write. So let's, oh, I know what I was gonna do. I was gonna have two of them open so that I can see what I'm doing. I uh, mean, one second. <sighs> Go away. <laughs> okay. So back to the regular schedule programming. So what are some other tests people might think of to uh, do <laughs> like for our, and we want to do a very, very simple calculator. Uh, so we want to think about, let me just see if this is going to change both or just my. just to make it more. Okay, so what are some other things that we should test for? So all we're doing is addition. So we just want tests around an adder. Okay, so, Keyboards or things are in the wrong place. So just just around addition. Okay, so we have one very simple test, which is um, let's add two numbers together, right, and make sure that it doesn't throw an error. Okay, and that's it. Like we don't check the quality or anything else. So what else can we check? Uh, adding two floats. Okay, that's good. So the way we do it is we say test. Um, I don't know. Let's just call it with two floats, assuming I spelled that right, um, doesn't actually really matter. Then we use self, and I'll remember a colon. Um, and then now what we do, uh, how many people have you, have you used PyTest before? Okay, so uh, the way you do it is, um, does anybody know, you probably learned this in like kind of uh, more theoretical computer science, like you know what an assertion is? Has anybody ever covered that? All right, tell me what an assertion is. So it checks to see if a condition is true, otherwise it'll throw an error. Right, right. So um, so this assert here, okay, just says blow up if if whatever is after it isn't true. Um, and there's some there's a couple of variants on it that kind of do like almost like the reverse and stuff like that. Um, but uh, they're relatively uncommonly used and they're different in every language. So I always have to go look up what it is in like Python. So uh, I'm not gonna talk about those too much, but you get the idea. So if we wanna say test with two floats, so then what we wanna do maybe is uh, calculator add, which doesn't exist yet, right? Because we haven't written the code. <coughs> um, let's say, wait, oops, sorry. Uh, I wanna use my, uh, my cheat sheet so that it's less likely to fail badly. Um, yeah, okay, so.
But so this particular calculator actually will take strings, okay? So we're gonna say um, 2.3 comma uh, 4.5, right? And we're actually gonna assert that directly. We could do this nicer, but usually with tests, we wanna just kind of do it as cheap as possible. Um, and so we're gonna say equals, anyone? So 6.8, okay? So basically now we're gonna run a test that does, uh, you know, test two floats. Um, and theoretically, we should now get two fails, right? That's exactly what we want, <clears throat> all right? So anybody have any other tests they could come up with? Like what are some other cases we wanna make sure work? Uh, just call it out so I don't go look around for hands. Come on, ideas. Adding negative or positive. Adding negatives, yeah, that's good. Uh, add <laughs> neg and pause maybe. All right. Then we would say assert um, and basically, and so I actually will sometimes even uh, kind of merge some of this together, but you have to think about what you want to do. Uh, so, like, so, so I could write like a function, right? That would um, uh, kind of collect the assertions. Um, but the thing is, is that it's, it's actually almost better in this kind of code uh, to repeat yourself because you're like, what you want to do is you want to be able to go and look at like one test and figure out why it's failing. You don't want to have to like understand your testing code. Does that make sense? So even though I'm going to basically write the exact same line of code as the one above, generally speaking, it's a better idea to do that rather than what you would normally do in all other programming scenarios, right? Is like write some method that would like try to concat, you know, uh, collapse that code. But in this particular case, because you only want to go to it sometimes, um, let's do something easier. So how about two? And we'll say... 0 0.3, right? Okay, uh, cool. All right, so now our tests are failing again, which is good. And we know, and we're kind of, we're kind of seeing that it's like showing us the right tests, you know? All right, so then we would go on to write our code, which I have no chance of seeing where that directory is. Uh, okay, like up to. All right, and so now this is where we start to write our code. And obviously, you know, I'm doing a, like a little demo, so um, it's not gonna be uh, like, like I'd spend a lot more time trying to think of tests, okay? Just trying to make sure that, you know, I get a, a pretty reasonable coverage. You don't have to be perfect, but pretty good coverage uh, if I was doing it for real. And, So, yeah, in the interest of time, I'm just gonna, I was originally I was gonna show you me writing the code here, um, but I'll just kind of <laughs> put it in. So now if we kind of say that we create, you know, our, our calculator directory, we create a file called calculator.py because this is the way Python works. It's like, along with the spacing, it's like directory stuff all has to be right, which also annoys me if you can't tell. Um, but now if we run this, we should be getting a uh, valid test, right? Except we're not. Um, so we actually, so the, this code I stripped it from actually only allows ints, okay? But so this is actually, in a sense, a good result, okay? But what we do actually do is look for the exception rather than looking for the, the answer. Does that make sense? So we do a try and catch and then assert that we got the correct exception. You follow me. All right, so that's just, like I said, brief overview of TDD. Um, like many, many uh, kind of accomplished, uh, you know, day-to-day -day programmers or whatever, uh, really swear by this method, okay? So I, I really do strongly encourage you to take a look at it. Um, there are a lot of techniques these days uh, for doing things with uh, like websites and still doing TDD uh, using basically this command or uh, uh, 
uh, like a plugin called Selenium. Um, and so that you can still work like this, but it's a web page. You know what I mean? Because that doesn't seem necessarily obvious. This is, you know, kind of a toy, so it's simple, but this is a really good way to work. So, because we don't have a ton of time, but do you have any questions so far? Do you get the idea? So, you know, and I dropped the code in there, but immediately we, we got a good answer here, right? So the assumption that we made as a class, right, was that you should be able to add floats. And what the code that was implemented decided that it shouldn't add floats. So that brings up a really good question. Should we change the code so that it does floats? Or should we change the input so that we check for that error? It's not a feature we need. Follow me? Okay, so, and I didn't really pause for questions. Questions? Okay, so the other thing I wanted to talk about was basically um, the advent, uh, so the popularity of trust, of test driven development eventually led to, hey, why don't we take a kind of another level higher? Okay, and so we ended up with this concept of behavior-driven development. And uh, it will often be written with the U uh, because I think the dude who invented it was British. Uh, still wrong, um, but you know that's why you often see it with the U. Um, and this is same exact idea as test-driven development, except instead of writing a test, we're gonna write a behavior, okay? And so what do you think we might mean by a behavior? Like I said, it's kind of like taking the next level up from a test. Any ideas? All right, how many people here know what a use case is? No, they don't teach you that at all anymore. So you ever learn any UML? Good gracious. All right, so, um, okay. So the reason I bring it up is user story is to use case as behavior is to, uh, test basically. Um, so a behavior <laughs> is much more like a user story. Okay, so it has like an input and an expected user return, which is kind of a slightly higher level, right, than a straight test. Does that make sense? Like, like, do you understand the words I am saying? I mean, I'll show you an example, which will hopefully help you understand what I'm actually talking about. All right, so that's what a behavior-driven development is. So same exact model, except, God, why can I never figure out where the mouse is? I need to like make monster uh, cursor or something. Uh, let me just grab the, oh, here. Okay, and so if we go, Over here, let me see class example BDD, is it there? Oh yeah, third one now, okay. So for BDD, so we kind of, let me show you first what happens. Well, now let me show you this bit first. Sorry, I can't see what I'm doing. Okay, so with BDD, Instead of a directory called test, so uh, hopefully it's still expanded over. Yeah, so so we put all of our tests in a directory called tests, right? And we put our code in a directory called whatever the thing's supposed to be. And so when we run high test, it knows to look in the test directory and look for any file that starts with test underscore. Okay. And then in there, it looks for any methods that start with test underscore. If you notice, I put test underscore in front of each one. And so it just kind of by the way you lay out the files, it finds all the tests. That makes sense? So behavior-driven development in Python is implemented through, like I'm sure there's others, but the most popular library is called Behave. Um, and it kind of uses exactly the same model, except because we were talking about it being kind of a higher level than tests, it does it with features, okay? And it does it slightly different in that um, the file has a feature extension. Make sense? So when I run behave against this directory, it will look in the features directory and then find anything that has dot feature. Okay, and then execute that as, as tests. Make sense? Okay. 
so what we do, and this is why I think this is very cool, is essentially in Markdown, we write, oh, sorry, I'm not in a good spot. We write kind of the name of the feature, right? Then we kind of give it, these are kind of like sub names and, the, and then the scenario is where we talk about what we want it to do. And if you look at it, it kind of reads a lot like a user story, right? Not quite the same, but very, very similar. But it's plain text, right? And this is how you write your tests in a behavior-driven model. Most languages, if they have like a, a behavior-driven driver, a tool, library, whatever you want to call it, um, they use the same syntax or nearly the same. Okay, right? so if you kind of know one, you can kind of pick up another one pretty easily. So, um, so what we do, and then you also have sorry. And then you have some like minimal programming. For example, in this one, we actually kind of want to run multiple tests in a sense. When I put and give it, so this is a given, right? When I put thing, okay, in a blender, then I switch the blender on, then it should transform into other thing, okay? And so we should have. Yeah, and so then you essentially make a table. This seems weird. Oh, no, right. Okay. So the you make a table here, um, and this is a markdown or very similar to a markdown table, and you uh, kind of declare the columns for your variables, and then you give it results. Okay? So when I put in a red tree frog, I should get a mush in no blender. Do not recommend. Um, get the idea? Okay. But the idea of this is that you can take this to your client, to your stakeholder, right? And this is consumable as English. Like they don't have to understand programming. Um, there, there is some grand mythic plan where you would actually have like an analyst write this. I have seen that happen on occasion. Um, a big project I worked on, actually I didn't work on it. I just got sent by the CEO to go find out why it was broken. Um, used a pure BDD model. Uh, and it was really interesting. And they actually had business analysts who were actually writing this. Uh, and so, so it can work. It's just not, unfortunately, I, I think it's really neat and really like interesting and a good way to do things, but it is not very pervasive, okay? So, but now what I can do is now that I have kind of written these behaviors as uh, in this syntax, then I can kind of go and write the implementations, right? Just like I would with test-driven development. Um, and then, oops, I can run the output and see what it does here is it actually runs each of those blocks, right? And it will actually validate that it does those things by running the code behind it, okay? Um, the example I happen to focus on wasn't a great one, but you get the idea. So you can kind of write in this kind of, you know, Englishy sort of way, you can write your tests um, and then you can write the code behind it and you can describe them in terms of things like user stories or outcomes, right? Rather than, because at the end of the day, right, the, the user doesn't care that, um, you know, like the, the nitty gritty details of a calculator, okay? They just expect the calculator to add numbers. So what you could do instead, right, is if you were doing behavior driven with the calculator, you could say, have a table like this, right? And I expect that all of these outcomes to work, right? So I could actually say, instead of, you know, the iPhone and uh, toxic waste, right? I can say, you know, one comma two, and I get three. Right, and I can say negative two and one, and I can get whatever that is negative one. Um, so that's the kind of things so you can just put those in a table, and you get all of those tests both for free, but also in a way that you can kind of present it to like a stakeholder, and they'll actually understand what you're trying to uh, prove. Right? That makes sense. Uh, 
Um, so yeah, so I just wanted to give you a little a kind of deeper demo of it. Um, because I think they're like test driven development, I would say is, I don't know, 20 or 30% of the companies that I kind of, that I know of, right? Um, it's, it's relatively pervasive. Um, you know, you're, you, it is likely that you might interview at a place that is using TDD, right? BDD, very unusual. Um, however, like Red Hat, for example, has probably, I don't know, five or 10 projects that actually use BDD. So if you happen to be interviewing for those projects, even though Red Hat at large doesn't use it, those projects do. And so, um, you know, so, so you, if you happen to be close to that, you would see that and you need to talk to them about it. But it's hard for me to say a percentage of Red Hat that's using BDD, if that makes sense. All right, cool. Any other, any questions? All right, so the two big things to know, right? So, you know, from a testing library perspective, high test and nose are kind of the two big ones. Um, and so you should know probably at least one of them, maybe not both, or if not both. Um, and then in, at least in Python, the BDD, like the only player is behave. Um, and like I said, I think it's super slick, so. All right, <laughs> there's no questions, then uh, have a good break.